Okay, so today I want to make a video about basic thermomechanical simulation. In Apacos, we can do it two ways. We can make a coupled thermomechanical simulation and we can also make a decoupled thermomechanical simulation. I think it will be a better idea to um, cons initially construct a coupled thermomechanical simulation because it is relatively simpler. And later we can look at uh, the similar simulation but with uh, decoupled uh, construction uh, because I believe that is very advantageous when we want to run multiple uh, simulations with same thermal um, cycling or thermal load but with different mechanical loads on it so we do not have to calculate the um, um, thermal equations again and again but we only solve the mechanical equations and just quickly pick up the thermal data so um, today we will uh, talk about um, we will look into a coupled thermomechanical simulation initially i will just construct a 2d um, um, a rectangular part naming part and it is deformable it is shell and i want to construct it in meters uh, so i want just to keep my units in order uh, approximate size will be around two and then I just want to construct this um, rectangle just let's refine the dimensions this is 0 0.5 into 10 raised to power uh, 3 meters or a, um, let, let's say it's um, I want to make uh, um, 30 centimeters into um, 30 centimeters part. Uh, hmm. So we have this part. For the material case, what I want to do is I want to, um, I do not want to input all the materials, I just want to import it. Um, let's see what we have imported here. Uh, it is already a saved library for modified 4340 steel. Um, uh, but we what we basically need is we need um, in the general properties we need density in the mechanical properties we need elasticity we need plasticity we need um, thermal expansion coefficient and in thermal properties we need conductivity and um, specific heat um, uh, for to define this whole um, simulation uh, effectively for thermomechanical analysis also all these properties uh, should be um, it is better if we have uh, temperature dependent properties so basically conductivity it is not defined as temperature dependent density is only defined as temperature dependent because they are not really changing a lot with temperature um, elasticity is also <laughs> not defined as temperature dependent but for example thermal expansion coefficient with increasing temperature from room to 1000 degrees centigrade <coughs> we can see the units in um, uh, SI units and then specifically plasticity because uh, when we are applying thermomechanical load with increasing temperature there is uh, drastic softening in the material and we want to capture that effect so we select the user uh, use temperature dependent data then we input it um, as a stress strain data plastic flow curve for a specific temperature then for another specific temperature for another for another for another we can usually get this data by testing uh, or also by um, running uh, by also collecting it from the um, literature uh, specific heat has also been defined here as a temperature dependent uh, thing so after um, defining uh, the material properties what we want to do is we want to define section um, I, for example for now i will just define a homogeneous section of um, let's say 4340 steel let's say 
and it is homogeneous and I select this material and then I want to give you can either give it plain stress strain thickness if you have a certain uh, finite uh, stress strain uh, plain uh, plain stress or strain thickness or otherwise you can just consider it a um, a non plain stress strain thickness uh, I want to give it a plain stress strain thickness of um, 10 uh, centimeters so now the section is defined and I want to assign it to my part and this is the part which I want to assign it to okay um, the interesting part starts from here I initially import the same part into assembly um, the a reference frame is not set correctly so I would want to delete it and I would want to construct a new reference frame uh, datum plane uh, coordinate system three point rectangular uh, this is my zero zero and this is what has been defined okay um what we want to do now is um i want to define a thermomechanical step so couple temperature displacement um this is basically um uh, a couple temperature displacement uh, simulation and then we can also define a dynamic temperature displacement explicit simulation so this is implicit couple temperature displacement simulation if we select this and then this is um, dynamic so explicit temperature displacement simulation for example for now I want to keep the model relatively simple so I will select comfort temperature displacement and I will name it Temple temperature displacement time period I want to run it for um, five seconds I want to turn on the nonlinear geometry I want to run a transient set to see the transient response uh, which basically is the requirement of uh, such model incrementation is quite interesting I want to increase usually what I do is I just give a large number here so 1e8 or something like that I want to initially give a very small increment size so 1 e minus um, 3 and then I don't want to make it bigger than 0 0.2 uh, minimum can be as low as possible so whatever and maximum allowable temperature change per increment also controls the increment size so I do not want to make it bigger than um, let's say 10 degrees so not more than 10 degrees a per per I think it is also big so we can keep it 5 degrees the expression below does not evaluate an integral must be corrected 1 e 8 maximum number of increments should be 100,000 okay for the field outputs I also want to collect um, thermal data Mm, I want to collect the stresses, strains, displacements, yes, forces and reactions, contact is not important for me in this case, um, yes, and history output, I think the default one is energy and thermal, I also want to collect um, Set temperatures and in energy everything is selected I just want to say okay um, now uh, basically what I want to do is I want to define the initial temperature of um, the whole body to be room temperature so initial temperature of the whole body is 25 hmm? so it is not starting from 0 it is starting from 25 and this is basically defining my temperature units as well 
um, now it is becoming interesting because I <laughs> because uh, yeah um, uh, I have done it quite some time ago and I'm not sure what to do but we'll see so initially I want to fix my part from one side what I can also do for this is I can just apply fixed boundary condition uh, on this side and I will just fix it um, what I also want to do is I want to apply um, <laughs> thermal load now this would be interesting I want to apply it in this thermal um, what I can apply here is surface heat flux and the value can be very different so surface heat flux uh, heat input and I can apply this heat flux I want to apply this heat flux on this surface so basically this surface is being heated and um, instantaneous means that the same amount of heat flux will be continuously applied on this side and um, the magnitude can be 100 let's say um, and we want to see what happens now I just have to mesh the part dependent parts cannot be meshed okay part mesh controls quad structured yes now apply is it small enough i think yes just for the startup and let's see okay we have our meshed part oh we didn't check the it should be coupled temperature displacement standard linear just to quickly run the simulations okay and i want to mesh the part again and i think the job is done we can rename it renaming it to thermomec or oh, and um, v1 uh, in it okay and I want to create a job for this with two CPUs and submit now I would like to run and when it's finished we will check the results okay so what I did was um, I changed the heat input to 5 e6 instead of initially applied 100 because that was that heat surface heat flux was too less and I did not effectively change the temperature so now I changed it to 5 e6 it is instantaneous so that means that when the step starts the same amount of heat flux is continuously being applied on this selected surface and then I ran the simulation and we can see some results the simulation converged uh, ran successfully converged successfully so there was no problem regarding that we can go at the last frame and we can see the temperatures going as high as um, 681 um, degrees centigrade what i would also like to do is to change this uh, scale and make it bigger so we can clearly look at it uh viewport, uh, viewport annotation option I want to turn these off and for legend I want to increase the set font to let's say 14 yeah seems good and um, common I am not sure where the settings are I still have or I always have to find them somehow oh. 
it's complicated oh, but it is also part of um, the learning curve I think not here uh, these are annotation options yeah here it is engineering or fixed apply yes hmm. or let's say engineering hmm. so um, now we can see that um, the highest temperatures on the surface the mesh is not very good to see this but still we can see is um, around um, 681 degrees and then at the end of this it is around 243 to 189 so around 200 degrees and then the rest of the part is still under um, um, is gold um, if we want to see plastic strains on so y can also see some amount of um, plastic strain and equivalent plastic strain is very less so around 0.5 percent but still we can see that in the middle it is higher because it is constrained in the middle and when due to heat the part is expanding this is the part where it so this is basically the response we only applied thermal load but we are getting uh, mechanical responses out so it is already getting interesting um, we can also see some uh, stresses uh, it is easier to see uh, stresses in x direction uh, where um, on the surfaces we see you no know, very 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 less stresses but as we go deep down the surface there are tensile stresses and then there are compressive stresses around the corners um, we can also see the stresses in the y direction so in the vertical direction like this and here we see that uh, the part in the middle is under compressive load um, whereas the part below the surface is under tensile load this is typical of the thermal load uh, case and due to this compressive load uh, the component here is undergoing um, um, plastic deformation so as we can see here and um, it, it, due to this plastic deformation if now i re remove the thermal load basically what will happen is that um, the there will be permanent plastic deformation the rest of the part because it was elastically deformed will go under will just go back to its normal state and then this will be under tensile load this area um, quite an interesting phenomena but yeah um, um, we'll see uh, so th this is the thermal case um, I want to compile here uh, and next uh, in the in the next video what I want to do is I want to um, apply um, simultaneous mechanical load and change the boundary condition of fixed from this side to bottom and apply a compressive um, uh, load here on on this um, surface and then we will see how because of the softening how this surface deforms quickly than the rest of the surface and how that is affecting the overall deformation geometry of the material so um, this is just the basics of the simulation and eventually i want to go into the direction of thermomechanical uh, fatigue crack analysis and these are the basics of um, understanding how the crack propagation will be affected by the simultaneous thermal and mechanical loads and um, how to uh, control and manage those things so yeah interesting stuff coming up but just look at this and tell me if um, what else you guys want to see in here we'll continue making more videos like this